Alright guys, so what I'm going to do here is replace a, an over-the-range microwave. This one has decided not to work. Uh, this particular model is the E-Wave KOT151S. Now this, these step-by-step -step will pretty much apply to every over-the-range microwave. Step one is to unplug your microwave. Plug and pull. It usually be in your cabinet above the microwave. And step two is, if you have a vented microwave, disconnect the vent that is above the microwave. So that's what we're going to do right now. My vent is behind this panel here. It's held in place by six screws. I'm going to do that quickly here. I just undid the six screws here. Just going to have to pry this out. Vent. Oh, I'm just gonna break that tape. I've already been in here last week. Lift up the vent. There's a baffle here. You wanna probably push against it, away from you, to un 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 unhook the baffle. Next step. This is the step you're going to have to have two hands for, is undo the two screws holding the microwave in. You got one here, you got that one there. When you undo that, the microwave will drop a little. And then you got to hinge it forward. It's on a bracket. service it or whatever needs to be done. So here we are unboxing a FFMV1645TH over the range microwave. This is going to go in this place when we're done. But first let's see what is in the box. So we got a turntable. Looks like filters. Looks like a range baffle, I guess you call it. Mounting bolts. And looks like the microwave. Frigidaire. And the microwave. Everything's wrapped in plastic. I'll probably just leave that on until I'm finished installing in case something gets scratched. Alright, so I'm going to remove the old ball plate because this is not the same model as what, what I just bought. This template that they give you. And trim along the dotted lines. Kind of wish they had done this at the factory. Another way I could do it is just to measure. Just use a tape measure and just do it that way. That's what I usually end up doing on these templates. I don't 100% trust these templates. And you see it looks good. Perfectly without any hindrance. See where it's going to go. I can mark my A, B, C, and D holes. Make sure that the old holes are not in the same spot. I got an old hole there, an old hole here, so it's 
it's not going to be a problem with it right here. So we will kind of mark a hole there. And mark a hole here. Mark a hole here. And mark a hole here. Okay, so I got one here, one here, one here, and one there. Now I'll take the mounting plate off of the microwave as installed. Take out those two, and this plate I'm going to two hands, but that plate comes right off. Alright, so we'll take the plate and we'll try to match those holes up as best as I can. Just make sure everything is going to end up installing properly. So, most of my holes are a little off. Let me show you. So while I have this hole lined up here, uh, this hole is not lined up whatsoever. So it's actually more there. So this is why I'm double checking my work. So when this is lined up, this one lines up, that one kind of lines up, and this one not really. So this is why I don't trust those paper templates. They'll get you started, but uh, in the end you gotta double check in order to get it done properly. I think we're going to do it right here. We've got an even amount of space between this end and that end. And everything's at about the same height, so I'll circle that hole, circle that hole, this hole, circle this hole. And I'm going to double check the height. Make sure we're not getting anything crooked installed. So from here to here is 15 and 3 sixteenths ish. And from here to here is 15 and an eighth. I think that's close enough. When I was uninstalling the last one, I noticed there was this screw here. This one was more than likely in an actual stud. Uh, these other ones were meant for a hollow wall, whereas there's no wooden stud. So I'm going to try my best to put my new microwave in a stud as well. I'm going to mark where about this was found, and hopefully we can match up another screw onto that. In the meantime, I will put these. Uh, toggle bolts in there that are meant for hollow drywall. So let me drill those out. I'm going to use a concrete there for these toggle bolts. Directions are calling for a 5 8 inch hole to install these toggle bolts. As it turns out, I don't have a 5 8 inch masonry bit. I have a half inch masonry bit and I'm going to install them at half inch and enlarge them just a little bit to get that toggle through. Eventually, I'm going to want to stick that all the way through. Yeah, that's plenty. The f half inch is plenty fine. That will fit through. So let's do all four of those to half inch. Okay, my mistake. Now that I stopped and read the directions, I see that I did not need to drill all four bolts. Uh, they're recommending the ones on the ends are the only ones that we need to drill. They only gave me two bolts. I would have installed four if they gave me four, but they only gave me two. So we will start these bolts off. Start these toggles by threading them through here. Make sure they're at an angle like this because you're going to push that through the wall. it up, push it through, pull back on it, that'll grip the, uh, the actual wall, and tighten that as good as you can, it doesn't have to be super tight because we'll do some final adjustment in a minute. Over tighten that. That just that's a little too tight right now. Okay, so we got a little bit of movement in there right now. Alright, and then I'm going to check against the paper to see how close we got that. This side is fine. This side moves needs to move up. Uh, 
No, that side is fine, actually. I'm going to set it down right here. I want to over tighten. And I'd like to see if everything is level. We've got 14 and an eight. 14 and an eight looks good to me. And then we have the stud I want to throw up. So notice my line goes halfway between two screws. I'm going to do my best and guess based on the drywall. Looks like we've got a stud here, so I will think this is the, going to be the closest stud. The paper says 3 16 I'm just going to use 1 8 We did hit a stud. It's in there good. Now we're going to assume that we're on 16 inch centers. That would place my next stud right here, but it's not going to work. So we have a good enough installation here. One's in a stud, two are held in toggles. Alright, so now we have the template for the, the top part of it. Um, Put this up here. I realized we got an issue. The issue is that they want the hole for the cord to go right here. Where is my hole? Right here. Um, the issue being that I've got all this cabinet built around it, so I'm gonna probably have to drill through this cabinet to get the power cord up there. Okay, so they want the mounting holes at 9 and 7 30 seconds from the wall. So 9 and 7, 30 seconds, 27, 30 seconds. That's just under 9 and 3 quarters. We're going to mark that there. Mark that here. And then we're going to mark it. I'll just in 9 and 3 quarters. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing here. And I mark my 15. I get a center line here. 15 is right there. 15 is right here. So yeah, and from the center line, they want the first hole on the left at 13 and 3 eighths. So 13 and 3 eighths, Ooh. yikes, puts it right at this, this hole here. That's exactly where it's going to go. Oh, that's not a good place to install, but and then the same on the other side is going to be 13 and 3 eighths from the center. I feel like it's going to be exactly where that hole is. 13 and 3 eighths. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to lose some structural support with this piece of wood when I undo that. And then the third hole is going to be at eight and quarter from center. So eight and a quarter, right about here. So issue number two with this, issue number one is that they want me to put a power cord right here, which is going to sock. And they want me to put an insulation hole where that screw is and an insulation hole where this screw is. And look at this cabinet. I think we can get away with it. There's not going to be an awful lot of weight in here. Yeah, there's there's not much that fits up here to, to begin with. So I think we can get away with removing these and drilling through that. Alright, so let's undo this one. Alright, so these are toggles. These are not screws. Okay, so these screws aren't going to come out of there. Looks like the whole cabinet is built around them. So I'm going to actually drill those screws out. Hopefully that piece of metal that's still in there, there's an actual, what I think is happening is there's a metal pin interlocking with these screws. I'm going to drill out these screws, that metal pin will still be in there, so there will still be some support here. And then I can install my microwave right where that's going to be. I might have to use washers when this is done. I don't expect this to be a clean drill.
And then my third one is going right here. Okay, and then we're gonna have to get that cord right about there. I need to measure the microwave. So if I can get by with uh, seven and three quarters of an inch, I don't have to drill through that wall. So this, uh, this comes to, to eight and a half. Seven and three quarters is not going to happen. So I need to drill a hole at eight and a half inches from the wall. And four and a quarter. This power cord needs to go at four and a quarter by about eight and a half from the edge, which is right about here. I'm going to drill through here. Got through my first layer of wood. I eject that plug. I'm going to drill that wall just a little bit to get my board through there. I'm going to maybe go on an angle here to exit properly. There we go. That'll work fine. And that cord should fit through there just nicely. Okay, we're at the point where we need to decide if we're doing the recirculating type or we're venting out the back or venting out the top. I'm venting out the top. As you can see, I have a cutout and I got my vent system already in place. That means we're going to turn to page 21. Now we have to change the blower motor orientation so that it vents to the top of the unit. Currently, as it ships from the factory, the blower motor faces this way so that it vents out the front of the unit out here, which works, but I don't want that. I want all the hot air going outside. Remove the screws. One more. Now I can let the motor out, and we want to make it face this way. So now the hot, all, all the air will go at the top. I'm gonna put these back. ready to blow out the top. I was calling for the damper to be installed. I have a feeling this may not work with my cabinet properly. I may have to come up with a solution, but we'll go with this. We'll see what happens. Damper is installed. When the fan is on, that opens. When it's off, it closes. That way your bees, bats, everything doesn't fly down there. Issue I may have is that these holes may not be perfectly centered. I'm going to put the microwave up here, try to hold it in with this hole, and then I'm pretty sure this one's lined up. And then once that's up, I'll see if these other two holes line up perfectly. If not, I'm going to have to take the, cat, the microwave back down and readjust. If the holes get too large, I am prepared to use washers to compensate so that the cabinet doesn't fall through the top. We'll see what happens here. When we're ready to hoist that on, it has to be put on at an angle so that it interlocks into that bracket at the back. Ideally, you would have moved your stove out of the way so nothing gets broken. This stove, I'm not totally fond of. It will be replaced one day anyways, so we'll just work with it. So it's a nice fit so far. to the bracket, popped on there nicely. I'm going to feed this power cord through this hole. So far, it lines up, and the 
we've expected that damper that damper is giving me problems here. Any any screw right now. Okay, this one actually one on the end does line up nicely. I'm gonna put that one in there. side doesn't seem like it's lined up well so one out of three holes so far looks like it's cooperating I'm gonna have to adjust I'm gonna do my best to remove this damper because it did not line up. I did not think it was going to it's got a little mess I'm gonna have to fix that up properly I might have caught my cabinet a little actually okay Let's come forward. So one problem I have here is the damper wants to be right up against the wall. I have this piece of wood in the way. I'm going to cut a notch out of it so that we can mount that right up against the wall. And hopefully we can cut enough so that this duct will fit nicely. So we're going to do quite a bit of trimming here. I think I'm going to have to get a all and uh, take care of that. I'm going to have to get rid of that screw as well. This one I will probably flip the blade around. And I don't want to cut too much. It's possible. Okay, that cut through the wall a little bit. But How much of it can get out of the way? Okay, let's go up to the bar. So what I did here is I cut two slots. Gotta remove that screw, and I'm trying to get enough cut so that this vent fits snug against the wall. Because this this baffle is at a little different location. Than the previous microwave. It's going to be a little more labor to install it, but it can be done. I'm going to have to resort to an actual screwdriver. Now what I'm hoping is this cabinet is mounted in here with more than just this one screw. Yeah, that's a, that's a small piece of panel. I thought that was going to be an actual full half inch thick piece of plywood, but I'm expecting this, but this works. So we got this little piece of particle board. Still held in there, it's not cut all the way. There we go. And hopefully when this vent comes down, it pushes all the way against the wall, which it looks like, yes. I got no space left. That's perfect. Let me slip that back on here. Okay, so this is attempt two at getting everything lined up on my microwave. Baffle got mangled on installation. Let's try to fix this. Good. Okay. Let's make sure the vent opens all the way. Yes, it does. Closes. Opens, closes. All right. Now let's see if we can put this on top. point I'll get some duct tape and do my best to seal around the edges. It's gonna be tricky but okay so here we see the problems that we had and how I fixed it. Problem number one was that these old mounting holes did not line up so we needed to drill through an actual screw hole while I was holding part of the cabinet together. Am I worried that the cabinet's going to come apart? No, because there's an actual metal pin 
going from this point to the post that pin did not get destroyed that's still in there that screw on the other side was just to release the cabinet if you ever need to take it apart I'm not worried about it problem number two was that the plug hole did not line up so I had to drill on an angle through the wall I'm gonna patch that up with tape and then uh, issue three we had was that the vent did not line up properly I had to cut through the cabinet to match it up nicely here I patched up as much as I could with tape I can't get to the last side and getting to the other two sides um, a little rough but I think I've got it I think you've got it about 80-90% patched. Um, when this cabinet is closed, it's not really going to make a difference anyways. So there you have it. That was, uh, that was a little more difficult than I had anticipated, but easy enough to do. If you got the right tools and you can think through it, you can, you can do it. So let me patch that up and then I'll show you what the, I'll show you what we got here. Okay. Close out that hole. I put some duct tape over top of that and I covered the other holes in case something small wants to fall through. No one's ever going to see it. This cabinet's always closed. There we have it. New microwave.